Equality at the doctor's office. Medical reporter Dina Baer has more on the impact in Chicago's communities. Structural barriers, bias, and death gaps. At the intersection of race and medicine, the challenge is cut deep, but there is hope. Tonight, we introduce you to local physicians working to expand diversity and access in communities left behind when it comes to their health, where people are struggling to survive. This is how mornings start for Windora Cooper. It takes three of her grandchildren to safely move her out of her home on the near west side. She rolls down a long stretch of sidewalk her family shoveled to a taxi waiting to take her to dialysis or a doctor's appointment at least three times a week. Oh, my mom is a trooper. She has gone through a lot. Uh, her insulin lantus this morning. this morning. At her Rush University Medical yeah, Center visit, a nurse reviews the dozen plus medications the 69 year old takes daily. She has uh, high blood pressure. She has diabetes. She has gout and she's a dialysis patient. And in 2015, when Dora had a massive stroke that left her unable to speak or walk. Since 1979, Dr. David Ansel has been at the family's side, not just caring for the Coopers, but studying their health and learning from their experiences. The relationship changed the trajectory of his career. It was almost as if everything I learned in medical school wasn't incorrect, but it was insufficient. What's going on with the low oxygen now? He found that he could help our whole family with this information from my mom. And that was his way into our neighborhood as well to see what we were dealing with. The farther he traveled west of downtown, Dr. Ansel noted a steady increase in structural barriers. Food and job insecurities fed poor access to care and ultimately contributed to diminished life expectancy. Life expectancy in the loop, for example, you could live to be 85 or 90 years old. But you go seven stops down the blue line into Garfield Park and life expectancy plummets to under 69 years. The death gap he wrote about was echoed in a recent Sinai Chicago study. Researchers found the fatality rate for the black population in Chicago is 65% higher than for whites. It had to sink in. I mean, it took me many, many years till I understood that the uh, degree of disease and illness I saw in my patients was not just due to their beliefs, behaviors, and biology. It was my observation and my study as an epidemiologist to understand there was something about neighborhood conditions themselves that were promoting poor health. But he was taught to treat diseases, not economic deprivation. There's not one CVS store in the whole black west side of Chicago, not one. Uh, so if you need to go to a CVS, you have to leave the community. Coming to Chicago as a 26-year-old and working for all of these years in these neighborhoods uh, was that, aha, uh -huh. what if we had it all wrong? Like Dr. Ansel, Dr. Carl Lambert is trying to get it right. My earliest inspiration were my brothers. The family medicine physician has two both on the autism spectrum. I remember coming to Rush, like going to Rush with my family uh, to see the doctors. And I would ask questions and just say, well, what's going on and what were they doing? And I, was, I just found myself being very inquisitive and also very protective of my brothers. Dr. Lambert graduated from medical school in 2011. He was the only black man in his class of 140 students. It was very, very shocking. And a lot of times it's very isolating and feeling as a black man in, in medicine that you have to bear that brunt. So we need to have more diversity in the physician workforce that we have. According to an Association of American Medical Colleges report, in 1978, there were 1,410 black male applicants to medical school, compared to 1,337 in 2014. In 36 years, 73 fewer black medical school applicants. As for those enrolled, there were 542 in 1978 compared to 515 in 2014. No other minority group has experienced such declines. So you're gonna feel some pressure. For Dr. Lambert, the statistics reinforce his mission to care for underserved communities. Literally the sort of care that you provide in that sector 
adds years to patients' lives. Diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, those are things that run high uh, in our community. When James Mendez was searching for a doctor, he sought the advice of his father, an associate dean at a Chicago area medical school. He's one of the people I asked, uh, do you know any of your former students that effectively you would trust with your son's life? Uh, now we said that in a joking manner, but uh, it, it's very serious in nature at the same time. But it was not a long list. In fact, it was only two people. Um, and that kind of shows uh, the reality that we're living in. The exchange led the 29-year-old to Dr. Lambert. Dr. Lambert knows the medical side of it, as many doctors do. But he also knows some things that uh, are more culturally cognizant. You know, things that, you know, I can come to him as a black man and say and feel comfortable and understand that he knows where I'm coming from. While the doctor-patient relationship is critical, Dr. Lambert says so is addressing bias in medicine. There are certain biases towards, for example, black people that, that that's fed by media and television and all sorts of different sources that um, influence how we as the public view black people, and that may be seen negatively as, say, unintelligent. Um, not caring about their health or drug seeking or having a higher pain tolerance and these things are simply not true. We're affected by those things too and those can consciously or unconsciously affect the type of care that we provide. Let's give a hug. Oh yeah. It's the standard of care physicians like Drs. Lambert and Ansel want for all patients. Shalanda and her family have insurance, but have received charitable care at Rush in the past. It's all the way down to co-pays. <laughs> now you think about it. Am I going to buy dinner or am I going to pay this co-pay? That's how serious it is. You feel powerless. But their family has felt empowered by the access that has impacted three generations. Actually having people look at you as an individual and not just a patient or just a number, you know, it was really special here at Rush. Every tragedy, everything that happened in our family, Dr. Ansel was there. He was at funerals. He was at family reunions. He was at family get-togethers birthdays. Oh yeah, he's definitely a part of our family. A lot of people don't have that, to have your doctor in your family like that. Without his care, what would have become of the Coopers? Oh my God, who knows? You know, that's something that I think about all the time. Rush launched the West Side United program to bring economic development to areas in need, an effort to ultimately boost access to good care. Back to you.